Back in the early 1950s, Italy virtually dominated the Formula One World Championship, and of the bunch, Alberto Ascari was the best driver. He could float and dance with the car, and is still regarded as one of the greatest drivers the world had ever seen. His run from mid-1951 to the end of 1953 was so dominant, it would have made Max Verstappen shake like a doll crapping peach seeds. But when Ascari hoisted the trophy high at the end of 1953, that would be the last time an Italian would win the Formula One World Championship. As years went on, some drivers got close, but never got that cigar. The closest arguably being Michele Alboreto in 1985. Otherwise, Italy has been in a drought of championship winning talent going to Formula One. But right now, it does appear that we are on the verge of change. In 2014, the Italian race driver manager Giovanni Minardi was looking upon a crop of young go-kart racers in a summer camp in Sarno, seeing if there were any drivers who could prove themselves worthy of a contract with his management team. When one particular rookie went out, it only took him three laps before he called that driver's father and told him, Look, I'm about to send you the contract because your son is... It's a phenomenon. He's an F1 driver. The last driver I saw with this type of driving and sensitivity like this was with Fernando Alonso. So, not even racing yet, and he was already garnering praise. But when he did make his proper racing debut just months later, in a field of 56 drivers, he took pole position and won the race by almost 7 seconds. It was clear from the get-go then that Andrea Kimi Antonelli, or just Kimi Antonelli, was going to be a talent to watch for the years to come. As he grew up on the karting scene, he won multiple Italian championships, multiple WSK series titles, and two CIK FIA European championships. The CIK FIA World Championship always seemed to elude him, whether through injury or otherwise, but not winning it wasn't the end of the world. After all, Lewis Hamilton never won it either, yet we know where he ended up as a multiple world champion at Mercedes, and that team was taking stock in what Antonelli was doing. Giovanni Minardi had told Toto Wolff about Kimi about how he was a talent for the future and all the other sales pitch talk he'd get. After sending talent scouts to Adria to watch him race, it was clear that the rumors were true and that it was the easiest decision in the world to sign him to their driver academy for 2019. All seems amazing and a sign that a great talent for the future is being nurtured in the right way. But just a little bit selfishly. Okay, completely selfishly, why would a young, promising Italian racing driver not be signed by the Ferrari Driver Academy? Well, there was rumors about just how fast he was in the official Ferrari simulator. Fast to a point where the rumor that he was faster than their Formula One drivers is almost unfathomable. But despite this, they figured him to be too young for the time, which doesn't quite register with me. But then again, it does sound like something quintessentially Italian to be presented with a golden child raised in the land of which your brand was built on only to turn him over to the Germans who operate out of an industrial estate in Brackley. Anyways, eventually, his time in racing cars beckoned, and as soon as he turned three years old, he was ready to step up to his first class of racing, Formula 4. Even in the two or three years before this happened though, he did complete some testing in these cars. Sure, being born into wealth would help all of that, but immediately, and I mean immediately, as an 11 year old, he was already faster than drivers who were almost twice his age. His first major test however, was about to come. Arriving part way through the 2021 Italian F4 season, Antonelli would be paired up with Prema Racing. Somewhat ironic, given his father's team was in the very same championship. Dad, I don't know how to say this, but I don't want to drive your car. It's slow, it's ugly, it handles like a shopping cart. <laughs> Despite all the testing he was sure to have, competing in a racing environment is a whole different kettle of fish, even for the very best of them. He initially wasn't performing all that amazingly, at least not according to the hype around him, but as each round went by, he made a noticeable leap forward until eventually, in his third weekend in the car, the last round of the championship in Monza, he battled that year's champion, Oli the Bear Bearman, for victory. He wouldn't get the dub that weekend, but when the dust settled, what was perhaps most telling was that Kimi finished the year 10th in the driver's standings. And right now, I can hear some people saying, so what? He did miss most of the rounds that year, yet he was merely six points behind his teammate, who did complete all the rounds. He also 
finished fourth in the rookie standings, beating out some extraordinary talents such as the likes of Kasper Stucker. So with what little experience he's got under his belt, you would expect that for 2022, where he would compete full-time in the Italian and German Formula 4 championships, he would be able to launch a full-on assault at the title. And that was the feeling going into it. Most expected him to be at least a contender. But before that happened, he competed in the first weekend of the F4 UAE Championship to get his eye in for the upcoming season. And that weekend, the penny dropped. Immediately, he was winning. He would have won the first three races of that year had the officials not gotten too emotional over painted white lines. Nonetheless, the speed that was promised from Kimi's karting days was beginning to shine through. The German championship kicked off first, and Antonelli immediately started to dominate. It was such that for the first half of the year, he had won all but two races. He was literally cruising to the championship crown. But then, at the Nürburgring, the PHM car of Taylor Barnard emerged triumphant. A PHM car beating the Primers went against the natural order of things. It didn't make a hell of a lot of sense. Which is why, at the next round at the Lausitz ring, Primer didn't bother turning up at all. In that time, Barnard tore the house down, and now he had an outside chance of beating Kimi for the title at the final round back at the Nürburgring. Unfortunately for him, Prima and Antonelli would not make the same mistakes that weekend. Kimi dominated proceedings once again and won the ADAC F4 Championship, despite missing that round earlier, and Antonelli holds the distinction of being the last champion of that series. The real goal for that year, however, was to win the Italian Championship, his home crown the most competitive Formula 4 championship in the world, the one he wanted to win. Initially, it looked like it was going to be another walkover. The question posed right from the get-go was, what could possibly stop the antonelli Prema combo? Well, in race one, we got our answer. His gearbox. Then in the second race, he mistakenly tried to complete the rest of the race without a front wing after losing a brief fight with a trackside curb. Both of these races yielded no points. Then in the third race that weekend, he only scored one solidarity point after being penalized for ramming his teammate into Croatia. So after the weekend was done, Antonelli was sitting on only one point, with all of his teammates having scored much higher than that, and Irish sensation Alex Dunn leading the standings. Antonelli admitted being frustrated by his errors, saying that he just couldn't cope with the the emotions of that weekend. But for the opposition, this had dire consequences, because it meant that when the F4 Brigade rocked up to the second round at Masano, Antonelli would not make the same mistakes again. Over the next 10 races he competed in, he won 9 of them. He kept racking up pole positions and fastest laps, and made his highly regarded teammate Rafael Kamara look like a minnow. At least, on paper, the streak only stopped thanks to a puncture in Spielberg, which threw him out of the points. But whatever sliver of hope may have been possibly bestowed onto the other 3 million drivers on that Italian F4 grid, and in particular, championship rival Alex Dunn, it wouldn't matter, because in the last round at Mugello, Antonelli beat the sh out of everyone. It was about as dominant as you could ask from the lad, and meant that he comfortably secured the Italian F4 title, as well as the rookie's title as well. But, of course, at the end of the year, when Kimi saw both the German and Italian F4 title trophies staring back at him, he decided, Yeah, you know what? I can win some more of these. At the end of the year, he headed to the south of France to take part in the FIA Motorsport Games, representing Italy. And guess what happened? Yeah, utter domination. Gold medal for Italia, another bloody trophy for Kimi Antonelli. And it was only after he had taken all the spoils where he let everyone know that, oh yeah, I've been driving around with a broken wrist thanks to a collision and qualifying. <laughs> what the f You can't even injure the guy to slow him down. Really, could anything possibly rein this guy in? Since there was nothing left for Kimi to dominate in Formula 4, he made the step up to Formula Regional for 2023. In need of some extra training, and certainly not short of money, Antonelli picked a winter series to cut his teeth in. Unfortunately, he picked the wrong one. But with a largely similar field to what he would experience over in Europe, this was going to be a good litmus test for him, especially given the likes of Dino Boganovic and Gabriele Mini, who already had a couple of years' experience in these cars, were in there with him. But even from the get-go, he was hounding them. While he couldn't muster a win in the first two rounds, 
rounds. His remarkable consistency meant that he was leading the championship heading into the second leg in Kuwait, where, surprise, surprise, he began to win again. And it wasn't even lights to flag boring victories either. He would be climbing up through the pack, performing sweet moves while he was at it. However, heading into the last round, Antonelli wasn't as far ahead in the standings as you would think he would be. And this was, in large part, down to multiple penalties throughout the season that he incurred due to his own over-eagerness. There was still a very good chance that Taylor Barnard could win the championship. So, in that final round in Abu Dhabi, Antonelli needed to mitigate the danger, stay out of trouble, and just drive in the points to take the title. And this was advice that lasted for, ooh, it must have been four minutes, before he harpooned into the back of Barnard in race one and gave himself another penalty. This meant that he scored no points. But luckily for him, thanks to his own gymnastics, Barnard didn't score any either. Barnard needed to score points in the second race to keep his championship alive. But when he couldn't do that, it meant that Kimi Antonelli, despite scoring yet another penalty in that second race, was the 2023 Formula Regional Middle Eastern Champion. It was a messy end to proceedings, but at the end of the day, he won didn't he? All he got to do now was just go and win the European Championship. Easy. Yeah? <laughs> nah. For the first few events of the European season, there was domination afoot. But it didn't come from Prema, it was coming from Race GP, who Antonelli was not driving for. The rookie Martini Stanchon was setting the championship alight, and it seemed that, against what everyone was expecting, he would be the favourite for the championship this year. It wasn't as if Antonelli was being blown into the weeds, however. He was always right there, battling in amongst all those speedsters. He came close to victory in Catalonia, but Tim Tramnitz managed to ward off the attack. He threw away a victory at the Hungara ring through a mistake, and by now, Stanchon had a relatively comfortable lead in the standings of Antonelli. Eventually though, he would get his first win in the appallingly wet conditions at Spa Francochon. Though, despite this breakthrough, the mood that weekend was somber, with news that a crash on the Camel Strait gave terrible injuries to Adam Fitzgerald and claimed the life of Delano Vantoff. A lot can be said about whether the race should have been resumed or not. Either way, it was a stark reminder of the dangers that still remain in the sport. The championship moved on, however, and Antonelli began to take a win in almost every weekend from there on in. Actually, in Monza, he lost the race that he won, and won the race that he lost. Are you confused? Well, that's racing. Best not to overthink it. And after a couple of bad rounds per Stanchion, Antonelli went into the penultimate race with an opportunity to win the championship. In the final race that weekend, in the pouring rain, he absolutely destroyed everybody. And in doing so, won the Formula Regional European Championship with a round to spare. Despite admitting to being nervous and pretty much hating driving these cars, his lap times were miles faster than the nearest driver. Sure, he had some stunning wins that year, but it was the consistency that ultimately drove in the championship victory. Two Formula Regional titles in the same year. Couldn't have gone much better really. Well, maybe throw in winning on debut in GT cars into the mix. You know, just, just casually. So, with nothing left to dominate in Formula Regional, you would expect that he would have made the move up to Formula 3 for the year 2024. But he wouldn't. He would instead bypass that and make the quantum leap to Formula 2, one step away from Formula 1. At the time of the announcement, this seemed completely harebrained, but in actuality, it was a carefully considered move from his management and by Mercedes. A lot can be said about the backing he comes with, about how much of an advantage he would have over drivers on a budget of three quid and a box of food stamps. But one can't deny, he seems to have all the key ingredients to make something happen for himself in the top flight of motorsport. Will or can he win the Formula 2 title in his debut year? Who knows? If he does, then, you know, he might be worth the hype. Sure, he is with Prema, a great team, but he also has a supreme teammate in Ollie the Bear Bearman running alongside him. That's about as tough an ass as you can imagine. He might end up needing that second year. Maybe he won't. Either way, it is almost certain that Andrea Kimi Antonelli will be on the Formula 1 grid within the next couple of years. And for a nation that has been left without a world champion since 1953, Antonelli could very well be Italy's best hope since Alberto Ascari. But if there is one thing I do wish for, rather selfishly, it's that he achieve it with the same manufacturer as that warthog did, Ferrari. Because an Italian winning in a Ferrari? It just seems right, doesn't it? Thank you.